Last time on Races to Places, Basil hung out with a few tuk-tuks. Definitely a nice spot to camp with this beautiful view. So last night camp spot didn't turn out too bad. I uh, didn't get bothered by any locals. Surprising, because I'm really close to the road. Uh, just turned my light out when I heard anyone coming. And uh, yeah, here we are this morning. Let's take you for a walk through. One of the little tips about camping is always try and camp where people can't see you. Because if they can't see you, they won't bother you. So. I don't know you're there, but this is the view that I got this morning when I woke up. Not bad at all. Well, it's time to pack up and hit the road. As Lyndon said, if you're thinking of wild camping, a bit of preparation to find a secluded spot will mean there's less chance of being disturbed, giving you a good night's sleep. Let's see what this camel has to say. Hello, camel. Don't spit on me. <laughs> nice. It's mate up there. So, today we're making our way towards the Lalibella churches. If you're into architecture, then you're in for a treat here. Well, one common sight on these Ethiopian roads is crashed vehicles. And uh, some of them are crazy truck crashes, head-ons, all kinds of really serious accidents. But see here, there's a bus just run off the side. Now these buses are packed full of people. So as you can imagine, I imagine there's some minor if not major injuries on this one. You see it everywhere and the roadworthiness of the vehicles is really terrible. guys another country where motorcycles cannot go on the expressway but that doesn't bother me because it just means that I can go exploring the less traveled routes So uh, obviously they get quite a lot of rain in the wet season here and uh, it just washes everything away and where they build new roads it's obviously quite hard standing so the water runs down the side of the road uh, but check this washout out, it's completely washed the road away, it's eroded away, once was a road, now it's gone.
so I just thought I'd share with you all the typical Ethiopian town struck city life. Guys, trying to sell me some weed. What? Yeah, anything. <laughs> wow, could be in the Yorkshire Dales here for all I knew. Look at that lovely bridge there. The green fields. It's beautiful. the first group of kids that I've met that have come running towards me and singing for me. No, 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 no. no. And uh, they're asking me for pens and money, but the only thing... No, 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 no. The, the only thing that I can think to give them is stickers. So I'm going to dig my stickers out and give them some stickers. The simple things in life, eh? Here in the UK, you'd have to be handing out iPads to make the children this happy. So um, yesterday I had a long day's riding and uh, made it all the way to a place in the Simeon Mountains called Lalibela. And uh, today I just met uh, Carla and Valerie. And uh, we're going to go and have a look at the Rockian churches here today, which is uh, one of the attractions, uh, well, one of the number one attractions uh, here in Ethiopia. Uh, we're just in this uh, local restaurant up in the mountains having some breakfast, and then we're going to go and have a look at the churches. So this is one of the trenches that they use to get in and out of the churches and to also access between the different churches, so this one and that one there. It's super deep though, dug all the way down. So here I am just sat on the top of the rock. So this is the roof of the church and as you can see all the gap around the church and everything inside is just carved from solid rock. So this whole church is just one piece of rock. It's incredible. Other than the little repair jobs that have been done here and there, it's just one solid piece of rock. Really spectacular. I've never seen anything like it. All hand chipped, carved, hammers and chisel. Wow. Amazing. How did they even know that the rock was so solid all the way down? And how did they design it and draw it and make all the walls so straight and everything? It's just uh, incredible. It's just mind-blowing that these churches are cut from a single piece of rock. So we can see on, uh, on this side, these pillars are original, completely original, carved from solid stone. Um, unfortunately, as you can see up there, there is some damage. Um, and on this side of the building, if we just go back around here, these pillars were damaged by the earthquake. Earthquake, yeah? and uh, they had to be rebuilt. So we see these are actually rebuilt from stone, like bricks, but originally it was all like this, just carved from solid rock. Well, I've never seen anything like this before. These buildings are stunning. Some serious manpower has gone into carving these out. If you want to visit these monolithic churches, you'll find them in Lalibela, Ethiopia, which is the country's holiest town. So this is carved into the solid rock. Wow. And they made it so perfect. Even these 
sculptures here carved into the solid rock just so detailed like amazing how they achieved it So here we are at St. George's Church and this is the only cross form monolithic church in the world. Um, this church here is one single piece of rock, it's carved into the rock and it looks like it's three stories but actually inside it's just one, st one building, one story. Uh, it's really spectacular. Even these drainage channels, uh, even these drainage channels here, carved into the solid rock, they weren't forgotten to drain the roof of this amazing church. So that's it, that's our look at the Lalibela churches here, up in Lalibela in Ethiopia. It's been really spectacular. Um, these things, these churches were built in the 12th century and all with hand tools. I can't imagine how they began to do it. I imagine they started with the roof and made the shape and then started to work down the outside and then through the windows onto the inside to carve all the inside out. But to think these churches and structures are just one solid piece of rock is really, really amazing. So I'm glad that I came to see it, but now it's time to get back on the road. We're gonna head north through Ethiopia um, and go see some other stuff. Beautiful scenery and the friendly locals waving. What a great day to be out riding, eh boys? Guys, I just can't believe it. I'm absolutely blown away with the scenery. It's just so amazing. Like, I made the decision to ride today. When I didn't... Oh, I've lost my glove. Whoa, come back, glove. Woo! I made the decision to ride today when I didn't get done with the uh, heritage site until two o'clock, but boy, am I glad I did. Check it out. Sadly, we're coming to the end of an episode again. Leave a comment under the video if watching these Africa episodes has made you think of visiting. Well, this has to be one of the sickest camp spots I've ever had. The view into the valley is just spectacular. I just could not ride past it. Uh, probably not the best because it's visible from the road, but it's super quiet up here. Um, there's a cell phone mast in the distance I can see and there's some guys there. Hopefully I won't get bothered by anyone. The nearest village is about 1,000 meters down, so I shouldn't think anyone would want to climb up here, even if they did see me. Uh, but we're gonna give it a shot anyway, because I wanna wake up and look at that view 
and I also want to see the sunrise at the other side. It's going to be spectacular. Next time on Races to Places, we've a new guest on the show. Hi everyone, thanks so much for watching Races to Places. Please check out the link to my Patreon page below where you can find special features and pre-released episodes of Races to Places. I look forward to your messages and comments on there.